So now we'll be talking a little bit about LifeRay Service Builder. I briefly mentioned this in the previous section, but now we'll take a deeper look into it. So what is LifeRay Service Builder? Well, this is a model-driven code generation tool. It takes an XML file, and it generates from that file persistence code, caching code, CRUD methods, and the service layer. And optionally, you can add JSON and SOAP remote services to it. And so this defines a zone where all the persistence operations run within the same transaction. And this is a development pattern used in all the LifeRay core services using the service builder. This can also be used without persistence to create, for example, web services. So overall, this is a very versatile and quick tool to get started on a project that requires a service layer. The service builder features include a persistence layer based on Hibernate. You can include dependency ejection based on OSGI declarative services. And there's support for customizing the generated database schema. You can customize business logic in the generated service and implementations. You can also have external data sources configured. We can tune the caching. And then you can include dynamic and custom SQL queries. There's a few concepts that will help us with service builder. First, we'll have the service and persistence schema definition file, so the XML that we were talking about called service XML. Then we can also model the database and add validation hints using portlet model hints XML. We'll also have the local and remote services. We'll have implementation classes, finders, service wrappers, and service context. So talking about service XML, this is the main configuration file that defines a bunch of things, including the global information for the service. You have service entities and their attributes, different relationships between entities, finder methods, different variants to create. So you have the local service and the remote service. You have data sources, service exceptions, service references available for generated classes and caching. So a bunch of customizable and configurable features. Here's an example of a service XML. So we see that the tag at the very top, service builder, this is the tag that spans the entire file. And here we see an entity. Within the entity tag, we're naming this assignment. And all of the columns that belong in this are the database columns that will be related to this entity assignment. We'll be touching upon this in our exercise too, but this is just what it might look like visually in your code. Next up, we have the portlet module hints XML. This contains the SQL column mapping for the entities. So this gives us a way for field types, field sizes, and validation. And here's an example of a portlet module hints XML. And we'll also be touching upon this in our exercise. You can see in the section for the field tag with name title that there are a few options that are configured for this that there's a max length of 150, that the content type is just plain text, and that this is a required field. So service builder code generation. How this works is you write your service XML to define all of the entities, all of the relationships, the finders that you want, and then we run service builder. After running service builder, it's going to take service XML, parse through that, and it'll create a file structure on the right. It will create the implementation, it will create the model, and it will piece together the dependencies so that you can write and develop on it very quickly. 